All right, so here is step one of airbrushing the monster logo. Uh, what I did was I printed out a reference picture, and you can see I uh, took this into Photoshop and just cleaned up the edges a little bit because I didn't feel like wasting all that black ink just for a uh, quick reference photo. Uh, what I did then was laid some frisket over top of that, and with a single edge razor blade, cut it out, laid my frisket on my panel, and I actually have two side by side. I'm going to do uh, one green, uh, probably one blue, and maybe we'll add those uh, shining uh, ethereal lights like you see coming off of the uh, off of the uh, logo on some of the cans. So there is uh, really step one. I mean, after obviously after your panel is prepped, but uh, uh, this is really step one of of the actual painting process of doing the monster logo. I do have another uh, uh, printout up there on my board uh, just to use as a reference picture and I, I guess I could have gone uh, black and white on this or black and gray because uh, it's not going to be uh, I guess true um, to the actual logo. I'm, I'm, I'm using this basically as a guide to know where the shadows are and, and, and the highlights but um, um, it's not going to be um, 110 percent accurate uh, to the actual logo but um, there we go follow on to step two all right so here's our next step what I've uh, what I've done so far uh, off camera is I took some uh, auto wear transparent base that's part number four zero zero four and to uh, help with the paint creep uh, under the fit under the frisket, uh, I just sprayed a a light coat of the uh, transparent base. So uh, that will help with uh, paint creep, uh, trying to creep underneath the frisket. But uh, since this is a demo piece, I guess it really doesn't matter. But um, you know, if this was for a paint project, uh, you don't want your paint cre creeping underneath your tape. So. Um, so that's a, a really good way to uh, to help avoid that. Just use some transparent base, put a couple light coats down, and you will be good to go. So, um, since we started with a black panel, and we're going for this uh, really bright green uh, and, and yellow uh, sort of looking logo, uh, what we need to do is lay down a white base. So that's our next step. Uh, just load up a few drops of white. I'm using the uh, Wicked Detail White in my airbrush, but uh, you don't have to use that. I mean, if you're an ETAC user, um, use that or House of Colors or, or, or other solvent-based paint. Um, you know, use whatever you're, uh, whatever you're used to using. So I, I'm primarily uh, Wicked, Auto Air, and uh, Spectratex, so that's what I have on the shelf, so that's what I'm using. And all we're going to do, there's really no uh, uh, rhyme or reason to what we're to how we're doing it. We're just putting a, a sort of a flat tone of, uh, of white down, uh, so that way our uh, green and yellows uh, will pop. So that's about it. And I'm getting some speckling, so make sure my tip is clean. Build it up lightly. Go for uh, you know three or four passes on it. Make sure it's really light. You don't want to get too wet because you know if you didn't put enough of the uh, transparent base down, uh, you can still get that uh, paint creep. So. Just uh, just build it up lightly. I see right here, I don't know if you guys can see it in the camera, but my frisket is trying to pull up a little bit right there. So I'm just going to make sure that's stuck down as best as possible. I might get some blow under from that, or under spray from that, but 
cross our fingers and hope not. You kind of do want to be mindful as uh, as you reach your uh, your last coat or your ceiling coat. Uh, you kind of want to be mindful of where this is going to be the brightest. Um, on the left edge, yeah, the monster logo is green, but uh, on the left edge of the whole thing, uh, this is really a a, a bright yellow, a pale yellow uh, that fades into a green. So. You want to be sure that that's actually the brightest part of your whites. So look at your reference picture. Make sure you're even starting to build those build those highlights even now. And, and, and yeah, this white is more of an underpainting. It's obviously not going to be seen, but uh, having it brighter. And those spots that will be highlights will help you uh, when you actually go to highlight it. When we're actually working with the exact colors. And that's it for the white. At this point, let it dry, clean out your airbrush, and grab some transparent yellow or uh, candy yellow. If you have a semi-opaque, you could use that too. Add some of the, uh, the transparent base, or if you're using a solvent, use a, uh, some intercoat clear to um, uh, increase its transparency. And when that's all set, we will go in with the yellow. All right, so here we go. We got the um, white laid down. Um, we're ready now to go in with our uh, transparent yellow. What I have mixed up in my airbrush is uh, about, um, I don't know, five, six drops of uh, transparent yellow, like uh, two or three drops of uh, reducer, and just to extend the transparency of it a little bit more, uh, about another two or three drops of uh, transparent base. So what we're going to do is we're going to go all the way around this monster logo and we're going to lay down the yellow. Um, the yellow again, like I said, if you look at the reference picture, it is the lightest color in our reference picture. Yes, the overall lo the overall uh, color of the logo is green, but green usually highlights to yellow. So that's what we're putting our yellow down first. Anytime you're working with airbrush paints, or not specifically airbrush paints, anytime you're painting really, um, you could be using rattle cans on this thing um, and using a series of sequential masks to get this done. Um, you want to work uh, light to dark. So that's why I'm working first white, yellow, then the green will be the last color. And on this side, that'll be done. It'll be set behind a uh, really nice on top of a uh, really nice black base. If I decide to clear coat it, it'll look really cool. I, I don't, 
I don't always out these these uh, sample projects because I like to reuse these panels for other things. So I'll, I'll you know I'll, I'll I'll airbrush this and uh, I'll go back and sand it off and and use it for something else. Even even if I don't film it, they're they're great to have. I mean the panel this panel was like two bucks at the hardware store. So yeah, they're inexpensive, but you know you get a few of them, you keep them laying around, you do something on them and you sand them off and and you do something else. If nothing else, just for practice, even when you're not uh, working on a customer project. And you can dry with your air as you go. But uh, I like the way that looks right now. I think uh, I think the yellow looks good. Move on. I'm gonna uh, pause here and move on and uh, load up some green. All right, that didn't take long, right? So I have some um, Auto Air Candy Green mixed up in the airbrush now. Um, reduction is about. Uh, uh, mixture rather is about um, uh, five or six drops of candy green, um, about uh, two drops of reducer, and another three or four drops of uh, transparent base just to extend. I mean, these candy colors are really, really light, um, and it will take a lot of coats to cover it and and, and reach that color that that uh, nice dark green color that we're looking for, but. Uh, you know, with candies, it's it's really nice to uh, build things up in layers. But that's also another reason why we put that yellow down first, because, uh, you know, you can put eight, nine, ten layers, or ten coats of this uh, candy green on, and if you're going over white, it may not be to a color that, uh, uh, that you like. But you put that uh, yellow down, and the candy will cover much faster and also be a much richer color. When you're working with uh, candy pigments, uh, auto air is a pigmented candy. Uh, solvent based candies, uh, traditional candies are, uh, are dye based. Uh, but when you're working with these uh, pigmented candies, I don't have any experience with the solvents, so I assume they are the same. But when you're working with these transparent, excuse me, when you're working with the pigmented candies, uh, the best thing to do is go super, super, super light. And don't be afraid to spend, you know, spend the time to put those... Uh, eight, nine, ten coats on sometimes if that's what it takes to uh, reach the uh, the color that uh, that you want, that you desire for whatever project it is that you're working on. And I can't see the can't see the camera right now so I don't know if you guys can see it but uh, I'm still double actioning um, all the time using using dagger strokes to go up and down Frisk, it's lifting just a little bit right there. Not a huge deal because uh, the candy, it, because it is so transparent, and I have a uh, a black base under there. It's really not going to show up, but um, you know, it doesn't hurt to stop and take that half a second to to just pat it back down, make sure it sticks, and move on. And again, we're not going 100% original to the uh, to the logo. This is something that will it'll look similar, you know, unless unless you're actually in, inspecting it, uh, you're probably not going to be able to tell the difference. But uh, still, in the end, a, a very cool effect, and um, still undecided what to do with this side. Uh, by you know, by the time you guys see this, uh, uh, that won't be the case because you'll see the finished project. 
but um, still undecided what I'm what I want to what I want to do on that other side there. Should I do green with some special effects? Should I do blue? Should I do? Uh, I don't know. Red. I think they. Have, I think Monster has a red or an orange. Um, should I incorporate anything with it? Maybe should I put some fire around it, or, or, I don't know, skulls or claws or you know whatever. So, I guess. Uh, I guess I'll work that out. Obviously, maybe I'll upload this in two parts. Just do this side and uh, do the other side as a, a second part. So there. Now you you guys can see now that uh, that we have this candy color starting to build up. You can see that in the darker areas. it's going to build that much faster but uh, those first couple of coats go extremely light especially with the pigmented candies because <laughs> just as what happened to me right there just now uh, it will blow out on you because they are super 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 thin and uh, highly transparent so uh, you know, chances are you're it, unless you have a blowout like that, it starts to spider on you. Um, you're not going to see the the color uh, on the panel until uh, it's pretty much too late. But uh, if that does happen to you, you know, um, there's no real way to fix it with candies. Uh, you kind of have to sand everything back and and go again. But um, You know, depending, I guess, on how bad it is, I guess. It didn't creep out all the way to the edge of that shadow, so I guess I might be able to go in and actually cover that. But, you know, that's the, uh, that's the realistics of painting right there. Things happen from time to time. No matter how much you know, or how much you think you know, or... Or what you've read or how you've been taught <laughs> sometimes you you just uh, I guess you get ahead of yourself and just start going crazy so I think um, I think right there is looking really good and uh, I will give that a minute to dry and unmask everything and show you guys what that looks like So there we go, all unmasked. There's our reference photo, and there's what we just painted. Now, remember what I said about the frisket pulling up and some underspray? If I can get the camera to focus. Uh, if you can see where that frisket was pulling up, I do have some underspray, and I'm not afraid to show that to you guys. I mean, that's the, that's the uh, realistics of painting. I mean, th that's what happens sometimes. But you know, you could go back and clean that up uh, quite easily. You know, you take some black or, or even um, a, uh, a a paint eraser and and erase that, and it's 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 just fine. Or you know what? Even cooler, add a pinstripe around that. Uh, get some one shot lettering enamel. Add a add a badass pinstripe around that thing. Bright green pinstripe or or uh, yellow pinstripe, and that's going to look really cool and also at the same time cover up that underspray so there's a lot of things you can do to fix that and you know as cool as this logo is I've, I've always really liked it I've never drank I've never had a monster energy drink but uh, I've always really thought the logo was really cool and as, as cool as it looks it is so 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 simple to uh, to paint and look really cool now can I sell this yeah probably not I don't have permission from uh, 
from Monster to uh, to use their uh, to use their logo. So I'm sure if uh, if I were selling this, uh, eventually I could get in trouble with uh, with Monster's lawyers. Uh, but uh, I don't think there's any problem with uh, with uh, I hope there's no problem anyway with, with me showing you guys how to paint this. So. Um, this is my fair disclaimer. I'm not saying to use this and go out and paint it and, and put it on cars and trucks and game consoles or whatever. Um, if you do, if you choose to do that, it is at your own risk uh, for using this logo without having a, uh, a license uh, from Monster because this logo is trademarked. So uh, there we go. There's the uh, green side. I'm doing with that side and uh, and uh, film that for you and then we'll show you everything uh, both sides together so stand by <laughs> 